Yogi Clan, welcome back to Yogi Cycle Service, and here we are in the shop with the front tire of my 2014 Ultra Limited. And what I want to show you today is how you can change this tire and put a brand new tire, brand new sneakers on your ride. If you are new to Yogi Cycle Service, I appreciate you stopping by and checking this out. I want to tell you that here we do everything motorcycle and everything yogi related. Now I will tell you this, I am not an expert, I have not been professionally trained, I've just been wrenching on bikes for a lot of years. So I'm just trying to share some of my experience, but I don't claim to know it all or do it all. Keep that in mind as we go through this video, but I'm going to show you how I personally change and get the rubber off and get the new rubber on this tire. If you're a returning subscriber, I thank you for stopping by and checking out this video and I hope it helps you and maybe gives you a little bit of confidence on how you can change your tire and put some new sneakers on your ride. All right, let's get into it. So obviously I have just taken this off the bike. I haven't even broken the bead, haven't even let the air out of it yet. Now I do have a video out there on how to break the bead. I'll put a link up on the top to do that so you can catch you up to speed. I'm not going to bore you with that here. We're just going to go ahead and, and dig on in on how to change out your front tire. Things you will need to do this. You will need something to take out your valve core. So a valve core removal tool, you will need that. I use Windex. Some people get soapy water, use soapy water. There's a hundred different things you can use, but you're gonna want something to kind of slick this area up to get the tire off and get the new one on. You will also need tire spoons. You can pick these up pretty cheap. I think these two, these, these two are my favorite because it's got the angles on them. We'll get into that in a minute but you can pick these up. I think I got these from Northern Tool. They weren't very expensive at all. I actually have four of them. I have two that are this style, one that style, and a, a big one. I use this most often for car tires, but my, my favorite two are these two. They work really, really well. So tire spoons, a valve stem removal. You will also need some rim protectors. Now let me show you what I use. I use Laundry Fresh Scent Detergent has rim protectors. Yes, I took some detergent bottles and this is actually, a, I think, some kind of milk bottle. I use these for rim protectors. Let me show you why. This is also a rim protector tool. It's meant to clip over to your rim. I don't like these and I'll show you why. Because after about two tire changes with it, the thing wound up splitting in half like that. I think I got this at Northern Tool also when I got the tire spoons, but they, they're just cheap. They break, they don't last. Yeah, they help protect your rim, but you know what? That works pretty much just as well. So I just devise, you know, that's part of Yogi Cycle Services, teaching y'all or, or sharing what I do, not really teaching, but sharing what I do to help you. And this works just as well as these. That's free, that's not. Scrap these things, they don't work. So let's go ahead get this valve core out, get this bead broken, and then we'll jump right back in. And I'll show you how I take my tires off. Okay, with the bead broken, let me tell you that clamp system works a hundred times better than that stupid Harbor Freight bead breaker. Let's go ahead and show you how this is done without using a tire changing machine. My bead is off. So first thing I'm going to do, notice I got wood blocks underneath this. That's to help protect my brake rotors. So let's go ahead and juice it on up with some Windex. This will help it slide off a little bit easier, hopefully. What I do is put my knees behind it, on it here. That way I can get this bead down below the level of your rim right here. Get some room. Put my tire protector in, get that spoon down in there, and go ahead and grab that portion of the bead. Then you can pull it up and pop it out. Get another one going over here. There you can get that edge up. Get you a third spoon. And then just work your way around the tire. I always keep a spoon in 
So I'll have one spoon here, one spoon here, because if you don't, this potentially will slide back down on there. And you don't want that to happen. Put that in, get this up. And then just work your way around the tire. And there you go. Now the outside's up. Now here, here is where a spoon with a bevel on it really comes in handy. Because again, as you go over to this side and you lift this edge up and you dig, you gotta dig down in there to catch the edge of edge of your tire. And with a spoon on a bevel on that curve really helps to get inside that tire and curve it around and get it. What I do is just lock those in behind my my uh, brake caliper. Some people may not like that. They may say, oh man, you're gonna bend your brake caliper. Well, I've changed dozens of tires and I hadn't bent one yet. Go ahead and get behind it. Once you get it going, you can pretty much just pull that tire off. And there you go, that easy to pull it off. The one thing you're gonna wanna check is direction. So, on, I think I wiped it off maybe. Nope. On this rim, we flip it back over. Two things, two things to take notice. I did take a Sharpie and wrote an R on here, indicating that's the right-hand side of the bike. So I know that the wheel travels this way. So what's going to happen is when you put a tire on, this tire is directional. I don't know if you can see it, but right here, there's a thing that says front for a front tire and an arrow that points that way. So since this is the right side, I know that putting it on that way would be correct because my wheel rotates this way. So you wanna make sure you put it on your right direction. Now on a soft tail, no big deal because you only have a caliper on one side, but on a touring bike, you have two calipers, one on each side. So when you take this wheel off, it may get kind of confusing as to which direction you're like, oh crap. I forgot which direction I have. So right before I take this wheel off, I mark it with an R. The brakes will rub that off. That'll disappear probably within your first 100 miles or so. No big deal. All right, let's go get our new tire. One more thing that's in a good habit of doing is when changing tires is cleaning off this bead here. So I'm going to get some brake cleaner. Make sure that bead's nice and clean. I'm going to go ahead and spray it down, clean off that bead. As you see, there is some tire residue that's on there. All right, with the rim clean, it's time to put on the new tire. So again, right side R. So I know that the direction of the wheel is this way. Just to verify, there is one bearing. This one should be yellow. See, it is yellow because that is the ABS bearing there. So I know that is on the left, this is on the right. Wheel turns this way. And the tire. Front, right there. Direction, wheel, tires, turns this way. Now my valve stem is right here. I do not see any kind of dot on this tire like you'd see on a car tire indicating lining that up with the valve stem. So I'm just gonna take, I'm gonna take this little barcode here, I'm just line that up with the valve stem. And we're gonna balance this with Dyna balance beads. So I'll, let me get this tire on here and then we'll show you how that's done. Now I am gonna apply Windex to the back of this tire, help it slide on. Be careful not to get too much inside. You don't want much moisture on the inside of the tire because it affects the performance of the balance beads. Now, if you do this right, you should be able to get it on without using spoons. There we go. Should pop on just like that. Now you can use the tire spoons to get the top of the bead on. So we're gonna do like what we did before. We're gonna get this side on first, use our knees to push it down and then work our way around that way. This side is now in and below the level of the rim right here. Slide it up in there, put a little bit more Windex on. 
probably don't need it really on this side, but we'll do it anyways. Get that one below. Again, keep that spoon in there so it doesn't walk back off the tire. This rim protector in. Get that on. Okay, okay. Get that rim protector on there. Oops, wrong side. Okay, we're on there. One more and we should have it. There we go. The tire is on. So, seating the bee. Let's talk about that for a minute. I have an air chalk that will work without the valve stem in it. Uh, unfortunately, it is MIA currently in the shop. So the one that I do have only works with the valve stem. So we're gonna go ahead and put the valve stem in and then we'll see if we can seat this bead. When we seat it, you're gonna want, it's gonna be noisy, so I won't be able to talk during it. So when we seat it, you're gonna wanna hear the bead pop on both sides. Again, I would advise you to spray Windex around both sides that way it, it'll help it seat. Let's hook up the compressor and seat the bead. Got a lot of air coming out. Sometimes seating the bead can be pretty difficult. What winds up happening is you get a spot where that rim just doesn't, or that tire just doesn't want to lean up against the rim and all your air comes out. All right, well, this bead is being a real booger to try to set, so we're going to try the ratchet strap style. See if this works. Seeing other YouTubers do it, so we're going to give it a whirl. Set that in the middle of your tire. That might have worked. Alright, All right, y'all, the ratchet strap method did work to seat that bead. Put the ratchet strap around, add some pressure, and what it does is it squeezes the tire together and pushes the walls of the tire out to help the tire make contact with the bead and sit, seat the bead. Let's go ahead and add our balance beads to it. So what we're gonna to do to add the balance beads is go ahead and break the bead on one side of the tire. I'm gonna break it right near the valve stem. That way I can dump two ounces of Dyna balance beads in there, stand the tire up. That way the beads fall to the bottom, the valve stems at the top, and then reseat the bead on this side of the tire. Now this tire I did order from Rocky Mountain ATV. It is a Michelin Commander II. I got almost 24,000 miles out of the last one. All right, with the bead broken, let's go get two ounces of Dyna beads. All right, I'll use this bottle to put them in. And this is why you don't want too much Windex on your tire, because if you're trying to get these delicate little beads in there and you got too much moisture on the tire, they're just gonna get stuck up in there. So make sure when you're adding your Dyna beads, it's, it's a dry tire. They're in there, some are seating on the bead. We'll encourage them to go inside. There we go. Reseat the bead, and then we're done. That's two ounces of Dyna beads 
You can get those from Rocky Mountain ATV. Two ounces is like $7.99. Three ounces is $8.99. I always just go ahead and get the three ounces. That way every third tire change, you got enough bees to do what you need to do. All right, Yogi Clan, there you go. Put on your cap and you are done. Tire is seated. Tire is balanced with the Dyna Balance beads. You are good to go. You are ready to put it back on your bike. I hope this tip helped you so you can feel empowered to change your own tires. Yes, it's kind of a little redneck, a little backwards between the tire protectors that I use and doing it with the spoon and then having to bust out a ratchet strap to strap it down. A little bit redneck, but you know what? It works and it's how I've been changing tires for over a dozen years. So I hope this tip helps you and encourages you that it is not that hard to change your own tires. Just takes a few tools, a little bit of some liquids to help grease it up, and an air compressor to seat your bead. And sometimes it, it seats really easy, and sometimes it's a fight. Today was a little bit more of a fight. No big deal. Last tire I changed, it was really simple. As soon as I popped it on, I hit air to it, and it, it inflated, and both beads seated right away. This one took a little minute and a little bit of coaxing to make happen. I see now that the ratchet strap, tried and true, it works to help you get that edges up against the bead, up against, get the bead up against the rim to help it seat. So if you run into some trouble, bust out a ratchet strap, easy peasy, got it done. So thank you for joining us. I hope this helped you. Go ahead, like, and subscribe, and share this video if you hear of somebody struggling to change their own tires. I'll catch you on the next video. I, you, a clan. Take care. God bless. Peace.